Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So a lot of you requested under the CJ video that I did last week that I should go and check out Dylan Corcoran and that he's got an attachment going on and then he needs help and he needs answers. So in this video, I hope I can provide that for him and those that are listening because I know everyone is curious. And a quick shout out to Loren Franco again for helping me. He, you know, sent me some images of Dylan so I don't have to watch his content because like I always state in these videos, I don't watch, I don't know anything about these people at all. And I like to keep it that way because I don't want any information that I learned to influence the channel. You know what I mean? And so this is just my guarantee that whatever comes out of this channel, like if it's accurate, then I know it's from spirit and from me and not from my memories, you know? And yeah, so again, thank you, Lauren Franco. You are awesome sauce. And so yeah, we're gonna get into this video. my first impressions of what I got during my channel and I'm not gonna lie it was very difficult this entity has the ability to suppress a person's third eye and it tried and I would keep pushing through and then it would put me to sleep and I would be like oh hell no I'd wake up and then try it again and it would be the same cycle so this thing can absolutely a do that but b drain a person's energy almost instantly. And so with Dylan here, this thing is causing a lot of issues. I don't know if Dylan has any health issues or like mental health issues or anything of the sorts, but this thing definitely drains the crap out of his energy. So if he's having issues with his energy level, it's this thing. But also I noticed too, so, the picture that um, Lauren Franco sent me, and I'll post it here, but it's very blurry, so I'm sorry for the quality, but when I was looking at this picture to help myself channel and get information, I just saw entities kind of like surrounding him. One was wrapped around his leg, and that to me is attachment, but it's like all the earthbound entities are attracted to him as well. And I suspect two reasons. One, he's got a lot of psychic energy, he's not aware of it, and he can astral travel whether he, you know, remembers or not, but because it's suppressing his third eye, he might not remember, but if he does, awesome. Um, also, they're attracted to him because of the vibration in which he's at, and this doesn't dictate how a person is, okay? It can, but people go through shit all the time, like mental health shit. Even a situation that happened recently that could have been really crappy, could put anyone in a lower vibratory, like, mood state, what have you, okay? And I'm not saying, like, he's a bad person or anything. I'm not saying that. Like, fluctuating as humans, that's normal, okay? So, let me just get that out of the way. But the point in which his attachment attached to him was when he was in a lower uh, vibratory state. And unfortunately, that's what happens. These negative entities are like, ooh, food, I can feed off of this negative energy. And then it, if there's enough, or if they just take a liking to the person, they can become attached. And so I get worried when he does investigations, especially if he isn't protecting himself properly because Again, he's attracting these things. And it's, again, through his psychic energy, but because his state here. And so, yeah, things are like, ooh, this person, we like him. And yeah, that. So during his, one of the investigations is when this attachment, you know, attached. And he was in a negative, like, mood and state. 
and it took advantage of that. And this thing pretends to be a little girl, which if you don't know, negative entities do this. If they have a skill to shapeshift, a lot of them will shapeshift into children. And the reason is children are non-threatening. They are unassuming, you know, they look like they're innocent. And so people sometimes feel guilty that, oh my God, I have this deceased child here. Oh my God, like I want to make sure they're okay and take care of them and be nurturing and or like not care if it's lingering around and see it not as a threat. And so they let it either stick around or they try to communicate with it and so on and so forth. And when you do this, it's actually allowing that entity to stick around. You don't want that. Okay. The thing with children too, children, when they pass, there's kind of like an age range in which, you know, angels kind of just automatically take them to like the heaven realms. And it's like, has to do with their ability of understanding. So I would say about, you know, from a baby to six, six or seven years old, Angels are usually just going to take them. And even when they're about up to 12, they don't typically get left behind unless, you know, something else is going on as well and something keeps them there or traps them there and they can't move on. But typically children don't get left behind. Spirit, you know, benevolent beings make sure children are taken care of for the most part. But so I know for a fact that this thing ain't a child. <laughs> I, I like, I knew, I don't know if, if he, when he communicates with it, with the spirit box or what have you, if it comes across to him as a child, because I know it's trying to trick him. I just, cause it tried to trick me and I was like, no, 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 no. But, um, so the true form of this thing it looked like, if you watch anime, <laughs> Death Note, it looks like Ryuk in a way. Very similar, like, to the face with the, like, big eyes, the creepy eyes and the creepy smile and the hair. But the difference with the hair is, is it's longer and it's just, like, black. And it's not as big as Ryuk. It's, it can vary in size, but typically it's... I don't know, it's like the size of almost a normal person. So, yeah. And this thing is actually a thought form, and it's specifically a man-made thought form. So, essentially, through whatever rituals or witchcraft or what have you, someone or a bunch of people purposely created this thing. This isn't a thought form like a poltergeist where, you know, it comes from another person's energy or, and it doesn't, it didn't come from, um, the manifestation of a bunch of residual negative energy coming together. No, this thing was like created intentionally. And what happened was it was created and then the people who created it kind of like forgot about it. And then it kind of went on its own way and wreaked its own havoc in whatever way it wanted. But then it attached to Dylan. And honestly, a lot of the Native American, like, conjured thought forms have been created that way. They will create them to help protect their people and the area in which they reside in from invaders. And after, you know... It protects them. It kind of is just like there to wander. And over time, it it needs energy to exist. And so it goes around and collects as much negative energy as possible. That is this thing. Okay. And it's feeding off of Dylan's negative emotions while also making them worse. Again, it's a wheel and a pattern of how they feed off a negative energy. 
and I've been sick. Okay. I've been sick for three days, like really sick, stomach issues, sleeping for 16 hours a day. It's not a good time. And typically, like when I either investigate a person or I have clients that I'm going to help, I will experience their ailments and their hauntings because I am very, very clairsentient. That is my most dominant skill. And so if he's having stomach issues, that would explain that, or it could just be me. But guys, is he having stomach issues? And I kept getting like headache pains, but this thing is also locking his third eye. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's getting a headache from that because I definitely got a headache from that. And yeah, it's capable of making people see it however it wants them to see it. And that's just part of its trickery, of course, but it has that ability to fuck with your third eye. And let's see. Yeah, he got this from ghost hunting. It's attracted to... It's attracted to something because it's feeding off of some negative emotion or feelings or traumas or something. Something, what, something happened with him. I mean... It's his business, so I'm not gonna start guessing, right? It's no one's business about personal stuff like that. But it's feeding off of him and it's draining his energy significantly. It's very parasitic. It's technically an energetic or an energy vampire. A lot of entities can be considered energy vampires and parasitic. And that's this thing because, again, it needs to get energy and order to exist. The other thing I wanted to point out is there is an, a male earthbound spirit lingering around him as well. And it's not, I'm pretty sure it's not from the farm. I think it's separate from the farm. And it, he definitely looks different. And he's giving like 20 to 30 years old, short, like medium, almost light to medium brown hair kind of reminded me of like the style that men would wear in the early to mid 2000s. It's giving like Miley Cyrus's brother in like 2009, 2010. But it's kind of like a little spiky, you know, and short. But He's also draining his energy. And the thing is, a lot of people, especially some of these creators and other YouTubers that are interested in the paranormal, will start, you know, using their spirit box or whatever technology they have to try to get answers and information from the paranormal activity going around them. And they'll keep doing it for content, which, you know, no shade, I get it. But there's a problem because A, it's allowing them to stick around and B, because they're sticking around, earthbound spirits, whether, they're, whether they intend it or not, they need energy to coexist in this realm because they're not crossed over. When you have spirits that are crossed over, they have the energy fueling them from the heaven realms so they don't need to drain other people's energies. They don't need to drain energy from the living, whereas those that are earthbound have to. They have to. And even though they don't, not all of them intend harm, no matter what, they are still going to feed off of the living. That's just how it is. It's unfortunate, but that's just the truth of it. But, so he's got that male earthbound spirit hanging around too and they like they like Dylan they really like him they think he's nice and they just kind of vibe with him and I feel like this male earthbound spirit vibes with him because they see part of themselves in Dylan which is why they're hanging around him that's why they like him and a, a lot of the entities and spirits more so the human you know earthbound ones are gravitated towards him it's because they like how he conducts his investigations and he's more respectful.
and they like that. So now we got to talk about how to get rid of this stuff for him. Dylan, Dylan, my friend, we need to get rid of these entities because if you leave them and you don't take care of them, they're going to mess with your health if they're not already. And so the best thing you can do, and this is going to be hard AF because this is kind of like your job and what you do, you need to cut off communication with these entities because the more you communicate with them, the more you're allowing them to exist in your energetic field, in your presence. Unfortunately, it's the truth. So it's best to not acknowledge it. You have to 100% want to get rid of this thing and acknowledge the steps that you must take to get rid of it. Because if, let's say, you know, you're like, okay, I'm going to get rid of it. But then you're like, but I mean, I'm going to talk to it one more time on the spirit box. No, you can't do that. Like, you cannot do that. Um, the next thing, it's feeding off the negative energy in which you're providing it unintentionally, of course. So you got to keep your, your emotions in check and heal any traumas, anything that caused or is causing any negative emotions. You got to work on healing that stuff or just be more mindful of that. And you got to be more self-aware of like your thoughts and emotions and why you're feeling the way you're feeling. Are you feeling a certain way because it triggered a past experience? If so, you got to heal that spot. You got to heal that experience. You got to heal that part within yourself. If it's because, you know, some injustice thing going on. Oh my God, they almost killed me. Yeah, it's understandable that you would be pissed off. But then you got to be like, oh, it's because they're unaware of, you know, of their surroundings and la 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 la. You just, I have a difficult time doing this because let's be real. Where I live, near Philly, um, people going around me on a red light and almost killing everybody. Yeah, that pisses me off and I'm not gonna lie. I'll fucking curse my ass off, right? But then I have to be like, oh shit, I can't, I can't contribute to the output of negative energy. Does any, it does nobody good, okay? It just doesn't. And I know maybe I'm just more self-aware because of my studies, my degree in criminology and my minor in psychology. Maybe, maybe I'm just more aware that way. I don't know. But even just by becoming more aware of those things will help you tremendously. I am not kidding. And then when it comes to this stuff too, a lot of it is a lot of inner work within yourself. And then you can add onto the physical things like the crystals. So black tourmaline, black obsidian. You would probably benefit by like putting a black tourmaline or black obsidian crystal on your third eye because it's it's doing it to me right now. It's going, it's like jabbing me in the head and it hurts. And yeah, so you would benefit with that, putting that on your third eye chakra. And again, I always say this, if you have like jewelry or a necklace, I have a crap ton of bracelets, okay? You can have a necklace, you can have bracelets, what have you. Make sure you, you know, charge them as well with each full moon or bury them in the ground, whatever, you know, floats your boat. Make sure you have one on you when you're sleeping and under your mattress so the thing can't mess with you when you're sleeping. Um... Holy oil. I always say holy oil. I love holy oil. Okay. And it's not that expensive. And actually, you guys, I have an Amazon like link. I am a featured creator on Amazon. And so I'll have a protection category where you can click it and you'll see all the stuff that I've used for protection stuff for myself and other people. So you can check that out. Just know that I do get commissions if you buy from the link. So, you know, I just want to be open with that. But 
those things are very important. And, you know, you can find them in other places. I recently found out that you can get Palo Santo wood and sage at five below. Like, who would have thought? And they're cheap because it's five below. So, you should get some Palo Santo wood and some sage. You know, do a little clearing of in your space would help, especially to kick out that earthbound spirit. You gotta, it's draining you. So cleanse your space often. Since you're doing this investigation work a lot, I would probably do it weekly. You're gonna have to because you're submerging yourself into that energy and putting yourself around these kinds of entities. And you might notice a difference in your energy levels. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, oh, a Reiki healing session would benefit you. For sure. I mean, you're on the road a lot. You could probably, like, find somebody online that can do it remotely or in person. But I highly suggest you seek a Reiki healing professional. That is a skill I am working to learn, right? So I can't do it yet, but maybe in the future, I will be skilled enough to be able to do it. But so I highly recommend you do that. Seek somebody that can do that. Probably have some uh, rose quartz and clear quartz. And a lot of it too is mental work and just visualizing your protective barriers and creating boundaries. You need to create boundaries because everything and anything is being like, ooh, he's so cool. We're going to go over to him. But you need to set boundaries so things can't just like enter your energy field. That's very important, actually. But yeah, I think the most important thing for you, Dylan, is if you are serious about getting rid of this attachment, you need to cut all communication with it. Stop trying to figure out what it is. I just told you what it is. So now you don't have to look. Because I'll even give you a picture and everything. But it's, it, yeah. So I hope this is enough information. <laughs> if not, again, guys, leave your questions, comments, thoughts, concerns down below, I will answer them. I answer almost every single person as much as I can. Sometimes YouTube hides comments. Not much I can do about it. So yeah, if there's another person you'd like me to focus on, please leave them down below. And don't give me any information about the person you were requesting. But guys, let me know how accurate I was in terms of like the things going on with him. And, uh, yeah. So, I will see you all soon. Peace out. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I will be going through more paranormal creators and relaying messages to them.